Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about Jeff Johns. And is he a horrible person or is he just someone that got caught up in a bunch of madness surrounding the literal hell that was the Justice League reshoots? So, this kind of comes, uh, uh I, I did a video from, uh, a few months ago, it was honestly probably close to six months ago now, uh, basically talking about the Ray Fisher situation with Warner Brothers up to that point. Since then, a lot has happened. I did get a comment recently of somebody asking my opinion on Jeff Johns, and I kind of gave a brief summary, but in this video, I'm going to be talking about it more, and this was really primed by the fact that yesterday, a, uh, a, a new expose came out where a Hollywood reporter basically interviewed Ray Fisher, interviewed a couple sources uh, that he gave them, uh, got a few insider sources, uh, and compiled that with everything that had already previously happened into this big long article just going through everything surrounding Justice League and the people Ray Fisher was basically saying was toxic on the set. And I'm going to be talking about Jeff Johns here because he's really the most mysterious case of is he in the wrong or not here? Uh, so the the hit piece, I guess you could say, was about four people in particular. The main two being Joss Whedon, the writer and director of the Justice League reshoots, who was apparently abusive to a lot of the cast and crew. And there are, it's kind, it's not up for debate that he did that. It's also not up for debate that he has done that on other productions besides Justice League. In fact, if you read this article, there are multiple really, really horrible uh, examples given uh, by multiple sources about things that he did on Justice League in particular that are horrible. And I'm not going to get into that, but uh, apparently he did that. And also he was racist uh, in that pretty much all the movie, all, excuse me, all the characters in Justice League that were either cut or cut down in terms of their role were people of color in the movie. Uh, Volko was really the only character that was cut entirely that was white. All the other characters that were cut were Asian or black. And also uh, the characters that were cut down in terms of their importance were also people of color. So that's Joss Whedon. Not going to talk about him anymore really uh, today. Then we've got John Berg. John Berg was the vice president of DC Films at the time of Justice League. Uh, keep in mind he was really kind of, uh, he, he's not a DC fan like Jeff Johns is. He it was, it, it was his job that he was part of DC Films. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. That's, that's a fine way of having your job at DC. If, if you just go, well, I'm a filmmaker and I'm hired to be the vice president of DC Films, that's great. Uh, he no longer works there. Obviously, he stepped down uh, late 2017, uh, early 2018, and that was, um, yeah, it, it was just a job for him. And apparently, he, he was kind of the cleanest one out of the four in that he apparently just kind of enabled Joss Whedon and Jeff Johns on the set of Justice League and also, uh, to an extent, uh, did do a little bit of abusive behavior himself. Nothing huge, but there was one example uh, that I might bring up later that Ray Fisher did say of him pressuring him quite a bit. Uh, but essentially, uh, there's... It's, it, it's, he was the one that had the least to do with it, and he was also the only one that actually later ended up apologizing uh, for his actions uh, later on. And apparently Ray Fisher also kind of, you know, kind of forgives him a little bit for that. But anyway, the last person besides Jeff Johns is Walter Amata, who is the current DC Films president. He did not have anything to do with Justice League, but Ray Fisher says that shortly after he started uh, tweeting about his experience on Justice League, he had a meeting with Walter Amata, who basically told him, oh yeah, Joss Whedon's horrible, we're no longer working with him, I don't know John Berg, so who knows, but, you know, Jeff Johns is a great guy. So, you, you know, you, you can't drag him through the mud and all this. Uh, and apparently he was also doing something to block the Justice League investigation that was going on. And I'll do a whole recap of the events in a second here. Uh, and um, uh, just so that Jeff Johns wouldn't get fired. And that's what Ray Fisher had against him. And Jeff Johns was uh, the guy who, who was the president of DC Films at the time. And he was enabling Joss Whedon and also doing some... Um, 
uh, abusive behavior himself. So, the essential situation was last summer, um, Ray Fisher started tweeting out about how his experience on J Justice League's reshoots was horrible, and then over time, more and more of this started coming out, um, uh, and then Warner Brothers launched an investigation in which they basically said, uh, oh yeah, um, Joss Whedon was abusive on the set of Justice League, uh, and Joss Whedon then left a TV project he was doing with Warner Brothers uh, and for supposedly unrelated reasons and they basically said oh yeah everybody else is fine though uh, which you know kind of makes sense but uh, yeah so let's talk about Jeff Johns here let's first talk about uh, some things that uh, make it kind of look like he is pretty guilty of this so essentially uh, some of the things that he did uh, on set a lot of them and this is somewhat of a running theme here a lot of them kind of make him seem like a guy who you know he's a white guy but he kind of puts himself in the position of oh I know what minorities think I know how they're going to react to certain uh, situations and Ray Fisher a lot of his complaints were uh, that you know he uh, was kind of creatively involved with Cyborg as part of the movie and that was important to Chris Terrio and Zack Snyder because you know everybody involved with the film creatively in terms of producers and directors and so on and so forth were white so since it was a black character uh, they were it, it was important to them that Ray had some uh, creative influence over the character but in the reshoots you know that kind of went out the window and uh, Jeff Johns in the effort of being politically correct uh, was doing things that uh, Ray Fisher found offensive uh, and you know there the the main thing that comes up in this article besides Justice League in terms of stuff that Jeff Johns has done wrong is something on Krypton uh, where basically um, uh, a black actor uh, audition for the part of Superman's grandfather and he basically said oh yeah we can't do that because uh, well a lot of people were being like but that doesn't make any sense because you know on, on Krypton if we're going with the Man of Steel mythos you know everybody was genetically created and uh, you know so it, Superman can have a black grandfather but I believe the official explanation given by a representative of Jeff Johns was that he ex thought the fans expected uh, Superman's grandfather to look like a younger Henry Cavill, which doesn't really have anything to do with genetics necessarily, so I will defend him a little bit on that, but it does really make him look bad when he when he does stuff like that. Um, and yeah, it's overall not a very good look for him. Uh, but yeah, essentially, uh, it, it does cite that he had enabling behavior where he uh, basically said, oh yeah, we can't make Joss Whedon angry on the on set, uh, and also apparently um, uh, Ray Fisher had his agent complain to the higher-ups at Warner Brothers, and Jeff Johns uh, yelled at Ray Fisher about that, and apparently even uh, said something um, that Ray Fisher perceived as a threat to his career, and uh, yeah, so nothing, okay, it's bad stuff. It's, it, I will say though, it's nothing that, uh, if you give him the benefit of the doubt, you couldn't weasel your way out of. Now, here's the thing. You can't really excuse a lot of the behavior by Jeff Johns and Joss Whedon on Justice League by just saying, oh, well, you know what? It was a really, really stressful situation at Warner Brothers at the time. They were under a lot of stress, and so they were kind of acting out. That's an explanation, but that's not an excuse. You, that doesn't excuse their behavior so there's that but at the same time you know you could see a lot of these things as misinterpreting the situation you know also on crypt on krypton set apparently uh there was uh, an actor who was like well you know what as a black uh actress here i think that uh, this really represents uh, black culture and then Jeff John said oh yeah that that no that doesn't make any sense uh, yeah you're misinformed and uh, that was really a major point of contention because it was kind of going no I, I I'm the 
I know more about this than you do, even though you are, you know, a person of color yourself. And here's also the thing, there's kind of conflicting interests here because Ray Fisher was kind of given the short end of the uh, stick. Ray Fisher does seem like the type of guy that, like, he doesn't really hold grudges like that, so it doesn't seem like he, uh ended up doing all this because he was upset and like made up a bunch of stuff he doesn't seem like you know he got reduced to a cameo role in the flash and his role was reduced in justice league and he was just upset about that and made this up uh with that being said though as i said before if you give jeff johns the benefit of the doubt a lot of this can be seen as a misinterpretation or just um doing things with good intentions but kind of being problematic so you can kind of see it like that but at the same time you know warner brothers has a lot more stock in joss or excuse me in jeff johns than they do in joss whedon because joss whedon you know already had these allegations come out about him in 2017 so they had to they they severed most of their ties with joss whedon long ago so it was easy for them to say oh yeah joss whedon was abusive on the set of justice league meanwhile jeff johns a was the very first uh president of dc films and also b uh at the time of the investigation was a writer a story writer and a uh an executive producer on an upcoming movie that being wonder woman 1984 and he still is working there, uh, executive producing a lot of their movies, and also uh, working on Wonder Woman 3, on the Amazons, and other movies that are in development as well. Uh, that all of which, if Warner Brothers basically had said, oh yeah, Jeff Johns is, you know, he's problematic, we're going to fire him, would legally be really hard to remove his name from, and you don't want a person that the company themselves has said is problematic associated with those movies. So it's really, it, it, it's a really complex situation. Uh, what do you guys think of Jeff Johns? Let me know in the comments below. Personally, I don't think there's, there's more and more evidence every day that, that maybe he is a bad dude. Right now though, there isn't quite enough evidence for me to make that conclusion. I think that he could just be somewhat misguided in some areas and overall just kind of been in a difficult situation. He may or may not be involved in that kind of stuff. Um, so let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to subscribe for daily videos on the franchises you love, and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.